Backyard planters, big or small, can be permanent or portable. The simplest planter designs consist of edging for flowers or vegetable beds. In the past, many used recycled railroad ties for this, and they still had a distinctive rustic appeal to garden beds. In recent years, however, pressure-treated landscape timbers have become increasingly popular. They are also very easy to create bed edges or even use to build up permanent planters. Railroad ties usually have enough weight to stay in place when being used as single-layer edging material. Landscape timbers are usually smaller and can be shifted by the weight of the soil on the planter or by the occasional bump with a lawnmower. Even railroad timbers can shift in time. One solution for this is to bore holes down through the timbers or ties and drive 12-inch long sections of 3-8-inch rebar through the wood into the ground. Make sure that you set the ends of the rods below the wood surface so no rough metal edges protrude. In many cases, landscape timbers or ties are also stacked on top of each other to create deeper planters or bands. The same fastening technique can be used. You may prefer to use 4-6 to six inch long 3 inch lag screws to bolt the landscape timbers together. The corners may be jointed with butt joints, overlapping log cabin style, or mitered and anchored with lag screws. You can also use long sections of rebar that are cut to the correct height and then driven into the ground beneath the planter. Portable planters offer the opportunity to place flowers in any location you desire. In assembling wooden planters, use a long-lasting wood that doesn't rot very quickly because it will be constantly exposed to moisture. Western white cedar is a good wood that can be used for these projects. It's also readily available at most lumber dealers because it's often used as roof decking. Pressure-treated wood is another excellent choice. 5-4 cents decking boards make excellent planter material. They're easy to work with, and you can use scraps from finishing a deck to build planters that complement the deck. The planter shown in Figure 1 is very easy to make. Although the design is a basic square, you can vary the dimensions to make it rectangular short boxes, large and deep patio boxes, or even taller planter boxes with a false bottom to add variety to your backyard deck or patio. The first step is to cut all the side pieces to length. Then rip the top and bottom side cleats to width. Lay out the pieces for one side on a flat surface. Measure the width and cut a bottom and top side cleat to length. Locate the top cleat flush with the top edge of the side pieces. Fasten in place with self-starting brass wood deck screws through the cleat into the side pieces. Locate the bottom side cleat with its bottom edge flush to the bottom edges of the side pieces and fasten in place. Repeat for the opposite side. Lay out the side pieces for the joiner side. Cut the bottom side cleat to length. Note that the cleat is shorter the thickness of the two other bottom cleats as well as the side pieces. This allows the first two assembled sides to overlap the next two. Center the cleat in place and fasten it to the sides. Repeat for the opposite side. Fasten the four side assemblies together with brass screws. Cut a pressure treated bottom from plywood or use pieces of deck boards cut to length and rip to fit. Bore drain holes in the bottom and then fit the bottom down in place over the bottom cleats. Cut the top cleats to fit between the existing top cleats and fasten to the side pieces. And these planters look nice when they're painted a color to match your house trim. With a little imagination and some railroad ties, landscape timbers, or wood scraps, you can create a variety of planters large and small for your backyard. Thanks for watching.